In this lesson, we're going to talk about the sequential sum of squares. This is generally the best way to test significance when you have uh, more than a few categorical variables in your model. Generally, an f-test is how you would test significance uh, for categorical variables. You test the variance explained by that model with that variable included and without that variable included. Sequential sum of squares is just a kind of shortcut for this sort of method. I'm going to start by loading in the data set. Um, I get uh, so first, I'm just going to use these two libraries. Just uh, I'm using R. I should mention this before I start. Actually, this is um, R specifically. This is a R notebook, which allows me to put intersperse code and text and explanations while still seeing the output of the code. It's a very nice system. Uh, so loading in some R libraries that I like to use, dplyr and ggplot, and then I'm going to have a data frame called birth, and it's going to be from read.csv that uh, and just so you can see what birth looks like um, it's a data frame with 17 um, columns and it's showing the first six right now there's 42 total um, glimpses is sometimes a better way to look at it so 17 columns 42 rows and you see say smokers zeros and ones mother age appears to be integers birth weight um, is our response variable for this. Uh, for this case, I want to look at head circumference as a predictor variable. So head circumference is either 12, 13, 14, or 15. Um, so this table is telling me that six of the uh, observations in this data set had a head circumference of 12. 21 observations in this data set had a head circumference of 13. 13 observations in this data set had a head circumference of 14, and two had a head, head circumference of 15. And just to see a plot of this, uh, birth weight is my response variable, and if I use head circumference as a predictor variable, I can make this nice box plot, and we can see there's almost a linear trend, which is interesting, and maybe a linear model would work fine. We're going to do this as a categorical variable, which essentially means we're going to have a dummy variable for head circumference equals 13, a dummy uh, so that if the dummy variable is zero, then the head, head circumference is 12. If the dummy variable is one, then the head circumference is 13. Another second dummy variable for head circumference equals 14. And again, if this dummy variable is zero, it means we're looking at a 12 uh, inch, I think, head. If this dummy variable is one, we're looking at a 14 inch head. And same for 15, if the dummy variable is 0, we're looking at a 12-inch head. If the dummy variable is 1, then we're looking at a 15-inch head. And uh, essentially, this allows us to do to split one categorical variable into three dummy variables, which gives us um, several different things to test. And this is why we're looking at an f-test. Instead of looking at individual slopes, because each one of these dummy variables will have its own slope, instead of looking at individual slopes, we're looking at does including all three of these dummy variables significantly change the variance that our model explains. So that's what an ANOVA model is doing. Uh, so we're going to fit the model. Um, birth weight is an intercept plus a slope times mother's age plus a slope times smoker, which will be zeros and ones, plus a slope times mother's height, plus a slope times uh, head circumference, um, plus some random error. And I can fit that code like this. Uh, so it's LM birth weight versus mother age versus mother height plus factor smoker, which factor is telling it that it, I want dummy variables, plus factor head circumference, again, telling R that I want dummy variables. And I can look at an ANOVA model, and I get a p-value for mother age, which is not significant, mother height, which is significant, um, according to an F-test, not a T-test. Um, just as a comparison, let's look at, what do I call it, my LM4. Um, I can look at a summary, um, and I get different p-values. So this p-value is a p-value from an f-test for a model with just an intercept versus a model with mother age included. This p-value is a p-value for the intercept. This is the one for mother age for uh, t-test for whether or not the slope is significantly different from zero. So this one is actually testing the, whether or not mother age changes the variance compared to the original model. This one is uh, testing whether or not the variance changes 
Well, we can see that mother's height changes the variance significantly, but it's not a significant p-value. So this is the row for mother's height. Uh, it's not a significant p-value in this case, but it is here. This is a common thing to happen. The ANOVA table is not generally the best way to test for significance of continuous covariates. It's only good for um, categorical or binary covariates. Um, so I'm going to remove this and look just at this analysis of variance table. Uh, so each one of these p-values is testing, is there a significant change in the variance of a model containing mother age versus a model not containing mother age? And then this p-value is, is there a significant difference in, p, uh, in variance explained for a model containing mother's height versus a model containing just mother's age? This p-value is a test of whether or not there's a significant difference in the variance of a model containing factor smoker versus a model containing mother age and mother height. Um, and this p-value, uh, including 10 to the negative 5, so it's a very small p-value, is a test for whether or not there's a significant difference in the variance explained by a model that includes head circumference as well as everything else versus a model that doesn't include head circumference but does include everything else. Uh, so that's what a sequential sum of squares means. Is we're starting from here, we're moving to the next one, then moving to the next one, then moving to the next one. We're doing it sequentially and finding the sum of squares. Uh, all F tests are based on the sum of squares and doing an F test on that sum of squares. Just to demonstrate that, um, I'm fitting a model that contains just an intercept. So tilde one means I my only predictor is the constant term, um, the beta naught. My LM1 is birth weight versus mother age. My LM2 is birth weight versus mother age plus mother's height. My LM3 is mother age, mother height, and smoker. And then for my LM4, I've added circumference to all of the other ones. So I'm going to run all of this, and nothing's going to show up. And I'm just going to quickly bring these two things closer to each other so we can go back and forth easier. If I do a, an ANOVA model of the difference in variance explained of my LM0 versus my LM1, I get this analysis of variance table, I get a p-value of 0.9948, which is not the same as this one. And there's a very particular reason why that is, and I'll talk about it in a second, or actually, that's kind of what I'm doing now. The residual sum of squares for this one is 72.496. Uh, now, the sum of squares is what I want, 7.848 times 10 to the negative 5. If I come up here, um, I can't actually see. Right, so let's move on to the second one. This is fun. Uh, for this one, it's my LM1 versus my LM0, so mother age versus something. Oh, this is my LM1 versus 2. So mother age and mother height versus just mother age, so my LM2 uh, versus my LM1. I get my sum of squares as 9.839 and a p-value of 0 0.01782. The sum of squares in the ANOVA table, the sequential sum of squares, is the same, but the p-value is different. So point, uh, 9 0 0.9.839, 9.839, 9.8339, 0.01782, 0.001270. The reason for this is because of the degrees of freedom. So in this one, the degrees of freedom difference between these two models is one degree of freedom difference. This, this model has one extra term than this model, so the degrees of freedom is one. Whereas uh, this model for all of these F values, F value is based on the mean square divided by, uh, or the sum of square divided by degrees of freedom. The F value and the P value are being based on 35 residual degrees of freedom. Sorry, my computer does weird things sometimes. 35 residual degrees of freedom versus this one's using 39. So the mean sum of squared, the mean squared error, the sum of squared error stays the same. It's the degrees of freedom that are different. So if I move on just to demonstrate that a little bit more, my degrees of freedom is 38, sum of squared is 7.7885. 
Um, I'm still using a degrees of freedom of 35 for the residuals in this case. Uh, my sum of squared error is 7.7885, and my which is the same as we had before, but the p-value is a little bit different, again, because we're using a different uh, residual degrees of freedom. And then when I run this final one, the degrees of freedom should be the same. Now we're dealing with 35 residual degrees of freedom. Sum of squared error is 26.862. And the p-value is 2.687. I wonder if I can get them on the same screen. Um, sum of squared error is the exact same. F value is the same. And the, this time, the p-value is the same because now that we're dealing with the last one in the sequential sum of squares, uh, our degrees of freedom is the same. So there's a lot that we talked about that isn't directly applicable. The main thing you need to know from this video is that when we're doing an ANOVA model, a, sequ a sequential sum of squares for a linear model, which R does by default with ANOVA, we're doing mother age versus a model with no covariates, mother height uh, with or without in a model that has mother age in it, factor smoker, uh, we're testing variance with that versus without that, while mother age and mother height are in the model, and we're doing it slowly building up the model one by one and checking the sum of squares and if we did this in a different order we would get different values so if i put say mother height um here and run this i get different values and now oh uh, yeah i changed mother age not mother height that's right um, and now the p-value is something else entirely, and it won't match up with the table down below. Um, so that's the important thing to understand about sequential sum of squares. The order matters because it's doing it one by one each time, including a new variable that put all of the other ones before it.